Thank you. What is science? Yes, science is biology, chemistry, physics, but fundamentally, it's more than that. It's a way of looking at our world, a way of discovering new things and furthering our body of knowledge. We do this by applying what's known as the scientific method, which is we see something, we observe some aspect of the universe. For example, I might observe that if I drop my tablet, it falls to the ground. Then we invent a description of this, a hypothesis. We come up with an idea to explain it. I might hypothesize that there's some force pulling this tablet down towards the ground. Then we use our hypothesis to make predictions and we go out and test them. For example, I might go over to the other side of the stage and drop my tablet and see if this force pulls it down over there too. I'm not actually going to do that. But uh, if for some reason I went over there and it suddenly started floating it up in the air, I'd change my hypothesis, I'd change my idea and come up with something that the evidence suggests is true. That's actually it. That is all science is. And that's why we consider fields like economics, philosophy, as part of these social sciences because generally they use the scientific method. The thing is, sometimes we put our own biases on science. We put our own preconceptions towards it. We think that because we have evidence supporting our idea, it's been proved. This causes us to discount new ideas because they seem to go against our concept of proof. This is actually a misconception, and UC Berkeley explains it pretty well in their Undergraduate Understanding Science Guide. Journalists often write about scientific proof, and some scientists talk about it. But in fact, the concept of proof, real absolute proof, is not particularly scientific. Science is based on the principle that any idea, no matter how widely accepted today, could be overturned tomorrow if the evidence warranted it. Science accepts or rejects ideas based on the evidence. It does not prove or disprove them. Science is basically about having an idea and going out and testing it to find evidence. The thing is, to have this work well, to have us discover things using this method, we need a lot of different ideas. I found through my experience and the experience of others that this is why we need diversity in science. This is why we need minorities, people, from, people who have different perspectives, different backgrounds, different ideas, because this leads to a huge diversity of ideas and it helps spur discovery. I have two examples to share tonight. First is my own. I study chemical engineering and I have a visual disability. That's why I have the tablet here because I can't see the teleprompter. <laughs> People often ask me, how can I do laboratory work? How can I work in a manufacturing plant or as an engineer in a scientific field with my visual disability? People tend to focus on what my disability stops me from doing. I try and look at it on the other way. What my disability helps. How does my disability benefit science? First year design class, we were split up into teams to design an engineering solution to help blind people navigate the streets of Halifax, Nova Scotia. I was in my element. I sat down in the brainstorming session and I was able to say, hey, this is what I think would work for me. I was able to come up with ideas, constraints, requirements, I used my experiences as a visually disabled person to benefit the project. It allowed me to suggest unique ideas. Eventually, we designed and coded an iPhone application to help the client alert the client when the bus was approaching their bus stop. Now, I know that isn't furthering the boundaries of science very much, but it proved the point to me that there is a place for disabled people in the sciences. There is a place for our ideas, our experiences. The same is true for people of other backgrounds. My second example is that of Dr. Christopher Schmidt, a homosexual professor at Boston University. Some 20 years ago, he attended a lecture as an undergraduate about t-shirt sniffing experiments. Now these experiments sought to characterize whether scent played a role in physical attraction. Dr. Schmidt approached the professor afterwards 
and asked whether the experiments had ever been done with gays or lesbians. He recalls, she just kind of looked at me like I was crazy and said, why would you want to do that? Embarrassed, he cut the conversation short and fled. He, re he said, to this day, I don't know if she meant what would be the hypothetical deductive reason for that, or why would you ever do that with gay people? So part of it was my own timidity, but part of it was also being 20 years old and gay and thinking, oops, I just stepped over some invisible line. This kind of thinking, the kind of thinking that that professor displayed is regressive. It does not spur discovery. Who knows what we could discover when questions like that are asked? When people like Dr. Schmidt lead those kind of experiments and have those kind of ideas and we go out and test them. This is why we need more minorities in science. Because fundamentally, science is about this scientific method. It's all about having different ideas and going and testing them to find evidence. This is how we discover things. It seems that it is our diversity that spurs discovery. This is why we need people like me, like Dr. Schmidt. This is why we need elderly scientists, why we need minorities, why we need women, more women in science, why we need more queer people, more people with different religions, why we need all these people, because all these voices help us have those great ideas that spur the scientific discovery. Often though, in scientific fields, we talk about the how. How are we going to encourage more people, more minorities to become scientists? I think that sometimes we talk about it so much that we forget the why. It's not about quotas. It's not about being politically correct. It's about having great ideas, finding evidence. And having people from all walks of life brings a wonderful diversity of ideas that spurs this discovery. Anyone can be a scientist, and we need more minority scientists. So my message is this, my takeaway is this. Let's be a little kinder to people, to everyone. There is a place for everyone in the sciences and in our society. As we diversify our scientific fields, we'll go a long way towards creating that inclusive culture that we're striving for. Thank you.